All right, y'all. Look at the Joe's Retro World. Today, we're going to take a look at the PlayStation 3 in 2024 and why you should go out there and throw on some custom firmware into this bad boy and make it the best that you could possibly make. I want to show you today a lot of the features that this thing can do. And it's just totally worth it. It's really easy to do. It's free to do. There's thousands of videos out there on how to jailbreak your PlayStation 2, I mean PlayStation 3 and put, not jailbreak it, but put custom firmware. Sorry, y'all. I know somebody out there is going to get mad and say it's not jailbreaking. All right. So, get you a PlayStation 3. Now, if you can find a fat girl like this one and change the thermal paste like I did to help it stay cooler, Y'all probably saying, you changed the thermal paste and it's still sounding like a jet motor right now on this video? <laughs> yes. The custom firmware actually helps to make the fans run better and higher than the factory settings would. So that it actually cools way better than what the factory settings were. So like right now, the custom firmware, I can actually show you on the screen the current temperatures and everything and the fan percentage. But... This has been running for eight hours total. Just letting it go, playing in the background, playing the games full going. And I can feel plenty of air coming out. I had to put the thermal paste twice because the first time I did it, I didn't put enough and it actually turned off and it was overheating. So the second time I went ahead and put more thermal paste, not too much more, but by the third more of the little glob that I did put to where, yes, there was basically the same amount that I saw that I removed from the factory. It oozed over the, the side of the chips a little bit. Their paste was white. I used some MX-7, you know, thermal paste. And, uh, yeah, it works great. $10 little bottle. So, little you know, needle tube, whatever. Now, a lot of people think that it's scary and hard to change the thermal paste in these. All you got to do is just make sure that you put everything back together. That's all it is. Just take pictures as you're taking it apart and as you're cleaning it. Don't lo lose none of the little thermal pads that various models have. This one had like 12 different thermal pads. Luckily, they were stuck pretty good to the metal, you know, cover on the inside. So, yeah, it, it kept it together easier for me. But, um, yeah, don't be scared, y'all. This... This was going to be thrown away. I was literally going to throw it away because I tried to fix it and it continued to overheat after playing for about an hour. And so I said, no, let me try one more time. And when I did that, sure enough, here I am making a video showing this beautiful girl that I polished up with car wax. I put masking tape over the PlayStation 3, you know, just enough to cover their letters. And then I buffed the rest. Make sure you put masking tape over those gray parts, gray parts here, and then just buff the rest with your hand or, uh, you know, or a little wheel going nice and slow, just, zzz, you know, until it buffs all the scratches out. Just make sure you use a uh, polish, not compound, because if you use car <laughs> compound, you're going to strip the plastic and it's going to look ugly and dull. But if you're using car polish, that's designed to polish the car paint not scratch it it's designed to have micro beads that actually polish you know the surface to a mirror finish and that's why my playstation 3 girl right here looks so beautiful and sexy but enough of her let's go and see her hardware on the inside well no we're not going to open her up today we're just going to look on the tv and see what program so let's move this camera so i'm using playstation 3 component cables OEM cables are pretty old and they actually have a very very beautiful image right now you are not seeing it at its best in person it looks way better but uh, trust me it, it shows very beautifully now if I'm playing PlayStation 3 games I will hook up the HDMI and play it on a, on a 1080p you know monitor whatever but as for PlayStation 1 2 and PSP games Nothing but CRT TV and monitor. The composite looks kind of shitty. It really, really do. I don't suggest composite. If you can do component or red, green, blue component, you know, uh, composite, I mean, SCART. That's what I mean. If you can do red, green, blue, SCART cable, 
or red, green, blue with HD retrovision, component cables, the little adapter to the PS2 or just factory PlayStation 2 or 3 component cables. You have all those options, okay, y'all? So let's set this camera up so you can see this just as good as I do. All right, so first, you know, you're going to go and you're going to download your custom firmware and put that on there. And then you're going to go put your file manager. This is what you're looking at now. This is called file manager. And this is the thing that allows you to upload your games from a USB to your hard drive. Okay. And vice versa. You can copy them, paste them, all that good stuff. So if you want to make a copy of all your games, you can stick a USB drive to a FAT32 in the front. And format it to FAT32 and transfer games over one by one or in bulk. It, it all depends. Sometimes it allows you to move multiple. Sometimes it just wants you to do a few. But uh, it's pretty nice. It takes a little bit. Of course, it's slow. It's only a USB, I think, 2.0 or something like that. So, yeah. But file manager is very important for one of the applications when you do custom firmware. Uh, Mana gun right here. That is the most important because that actually launches pretty much all the games. Now this PSP R remaster, this is uh, allows you to play PSP games, and this gets downloaded with Mana Gun and the File Manager and Wii Man also. Wii Man Games is another part that you need. But for me, now that I have everything set up, I use basically Mana Gun only now. So once you follow the instructions to custom firmware, add all this, and you're ready to go. You're going to go ahead and load all your games up, okay? And once you got your games going, this is how you play them. So you're going to open up your Mana Gun. You can just hear that PS3 just still going strong in the background, can't you? <laughs> now, this is real time, so you can see just exactly how long it takes for this mana gun to load up because i don't want y'all to think it's really quickly and as you can see the image sometimes doesn't fit your screen if it doesn't fit your screen wait till this screen pops up and then you're gonna hit on the bottom left it says settings with the start button so you hit the start button once and this screen will pull up and you have global settings highlighted green if you move the d-pad up and down it'll go to the different settings right here the one you want to do is global settings and hit X and then the adjust screen pops up and you're gonna hit X on that and from here you're gonna use your d-pad going up or down to move the screen vertically okay to fit and I suggest you make it all the way push down all the way it can't go no more and then left or right on the d-pad to move the horizontal to adjust your screen so do this once you do that you can hit X to go look at your screen to see how it'll it'll see sometimes it works sometimes it won't I don't know what's going on but anyways if it works for you by hitting X it'll let you do a test pattern and all that good stuff if not don't worry just hit circle to go back now once you got all your games loaded and you need your download your covers you'll put right here go down one to download covers hit X and it'll look at the internet and it'll find all your covers for your games that you loaded and then you hit circle circle and if you would have had PS3 games they would have show listed right here and then of course all your PS2 games are right here and because I downloaded all the folders you know the the covers now I got covers for all my games on the motion 3 I'll run striker 1945 Ooh, i gotta try that in a little bit i haven't tried that one yet to see if it works the force unleashed over here on my ps1 games i got castlevania Symphony of night capcom versus yeah that whatever then dark stalkers 3 cotton gradius harmful park this is a beautiful game i suggest you get it and so yeah you can have all of it now clona i love i got i just been started playing part two on the playstation 2 because i got it over here right there yeah so i love this one so i'm gonna go back and play part one and if you ever look to buy this in physical copy it's like 200 300 dollars man it's insane how expensive it is now this game is actually fun 
There's a lot of games that are all hyped up out there that actually suck. And I hate that. This is a ROM pack. I don't know if it'll work or not. I don't think it will. You got Mega Man X 4, 5, 6. Some Metal Slug. Oh, this is a beautiful hack right here. This is the Metal Slug X Red Blood and uh, hack. You know, so it puts all the red blood back into it for the original PlayStation 1. And this thing looks so beautiful to be running on a PlayStation 3 emulating. It also plays PSP games. So you can download your PSP games. I got some Blaze Blue, Capcom Classic Collection, Little Big Planet. Yeah, and it's cool the way it shows it all with the cover and then the people in the background picture. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. And this is all thanks to people doing this for free, basically. I mean, they could take down donations, but without donations, nah. Oh, and this is cool here. Look, when you play this PC Engine game on your PSP version, you hit X just like this in Mana Gun on the game that you want, right? It's going to take you back here. Now, because it's a PSP game, it loaded right here on the bottom where that, where that little app was. So now I'm going to hit x on it i'm gonna turn this volume up turn the volume up over here it's asking me which emulator i want to use i'm going to use the one on the left psp all right it's already selected you can tell because it has the the chinese letters on the bottom see how that one highlighted because i pushed to the right on the d-pad but just leave it on the left and hit x let me turn this volume up Alright, so there's the game. I'm gonna start playing. This is just like the screen on your uh, PSP. It's crazy. Now you can hit the R1. Look at that. Here's the R1. Hold on. Because you can switch the, the, the size of the ratio of the screen. Yeah, I did that wrong last time. So start your game up. And push R1. And this allows you the screen to fit to the correct ratio. Like if it was being played on the PC Engine. Push it once more time and it does this. Stretch the screen out. Or 16 by 9. This right here actually looks pretty darn good. Great audio. You hold the PlayStation button just like you would a regular PlayStation, but and it'll say quit game. Say yes. You want to quit the game? Yes. So now you're back out. Now PS3 is just blasting over there. That air, that jet. It sounds like it sounds loud, but it used to sound louder, y'all. It's at a six right now compared to what it was. It was scaled through one through ten. 
So I want to get any other game, so I'm going to go back to Mana Gun. And I'll push pause because y'all need to see this again. Okay, y'all. So when it comes to these games, you got a lot of options, a lot of settings. Right here on my PS2 games, every time I would play this Guilty Gear XX, X and Core, it would crash. It would do the PS2 game thing and then um, it would get to the arch screen and then that was it. It would freeze up. So if you look on the bottom left, it says settings. So I hit settings. No, no, not that. We'll go back. We're going to hit triangle for game menu. All right, there you go. Now down here, I disabled this what is this called disable fmv skip i disabled that and i disabled the yrk now what this did for this game just by pushing x on both it, it automatically went from enabled to disabled and it automatically saved those settings so you put circle and i went back now when i start guilty guild x instead of it trying to get that i guess it's a copyright check it automatically just goes boots to the game itself. It skips all the intro and the music, so we don't get to see the little, you know, intro or whatever. But look, you'll see what I mean. So here is the PlayStation 2 format of this now, and now I'm able to play it. And this is how the PS1 will show. It'll show just either the black disc, which is just too pretty. You see the black disc or the gold for the DVD uh, style format of the PlayStation 2. You hit X, let it start. It'll go through that. Now it'll do this check right here. That's a very important check for copyright issues. Your PS1, your PS2, 3 controller will disconnect for some reason. See right there, it skipped all that music intro and all that. It went straight to this screen of the game. And this was the only way to make this game work. It's a beautiful game. And it just wouldn't play, you know, it's getting mad. how beautiful that game is. you get that game to work so let's go try another one out on the ps1 so i can show you how that plays same way hit the ps button in the middle of the controller quit the game yes now pushing start and select on your controller and holding it brings up this menu so you can see the cpu temp 57 degrees celsius the rsx is 46, fan is at 42%. It's going to start picking up. 45%. It's pretty nice to have the custom firmware. You can see everything. As you can see, I got 4.9 CSX Cobra 8.4. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. So, here's my uh, Nana gun again. 
So we're gonna go to Mana Gun, start it up. So here she is, the PlayStation format disc with the black, you know, disc showing. And I love how it does that. It's really cool. It's really nostalgic, it really is. Look how pretty it looks. It, it, it's amazing me, really amazing me how how good it actually comes out looking. A thick metal metal slug X with the red blood hack. Cause I played through this last night and man, this thing is really, really pretty. Such a beautiful game. Neo Geo, you know, they, they knew what they were doing. SNK, they really knew what they were doing. Long loading time, but it's okay. Oh. Oh, way too loud. Hold on. All right, perfect.
sessions complete. If you need more proof that hey, you should throw some custom firmware on the PS3. I mean, come on now. There's, there's nothing else you need to do. You just need to go get you one, throw on that custom firmware, and use it to the full extreme because you can go out there and put that retro arch. And when you put retro arch, then you'll be able to play Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, all them, everything. It'll be a beautiful compact retro gaming console for you for life because you cleaned it up and you threw on a new thermal paste so for another 20 years you're gonna be able to have some awesomeness y'all so yeah i highly recommend that in 2024 find you a ps3 fix it up if you need to and just love it and enjoy it and all the versions have all their benefits they've updated the firmware for each and every single one of the versions so, go out there, find out what you got, follow the tutorial video, and boom, you'll be set. Alright, y'all. So, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Until next time, peace and mud love from Joe's Retro World.